good morning friends and dear students i am here for my course flight mechanics i am in the module of fourth module that is the maneuvering flight and today i will be covering the topic of descent flight yesterday we have derived the equation for the descent climb and the descent flight and today we will be solving some of the problem related to the descent flight as of now we have covered in this i am going to discuss about aircraft descent emergency descent equation of motion for descent numerical 1 and the numerical 2 for the descent this i am going to cover in my today's lecture previously we have seen that what is the descent so descent descending flight is the major flight operation prior to the landing so if we take this aircraft just i will go again uh, with the some basics of the phases of the flight so we have here if you see we have here this is the take off i will write here take off then it is climb this is the climb this is the cruise and here this is the descent loiter this is the d e s c descent this is the loiter and this is a, again here this is the landing so as of now we have completed the climb we have completed the cruise we have done the theory for the descent today again we will be discussing so what is the take off so if here is the runway and aircraft is making some speed and as and when we get the sufficient amount of speed which is able to take off means the lift is more than the weight then it will be made like this it is called the ground roll and is there is a climb angle and which is a gamma this climb angle when with a certain amount of speed we are get, getting then climb will start like this after reaching a certain amount of climb then aircraft will be cruising at the same altitude your aircraft is horizontal there is no banking no yawing nothing aircraft is moving in the same direction with the same altitude with the same velocity if this is the condition it is called the steady state cruise after when we are just approaching to the near to the destination before some 100 kilometers aircraft will start descending so from here it will start nose down and it will start descending slowly slowly as and when we reach near so 15 to 20 miles with the permission of the air traffic controller if it is required that loitering is required your runway is not clear then aircraft has to circuit around the airport that is called loitering as and when this runway is clear then aircraft will be allowed to approach to the runway and then landing will start here on the runway and it will be stopped then it will park on the dispersal so these are the few phases of the flight so descending flight is a major operation prior to the landing so before this landing start here this is the descent flight descending is coming down it is the lowest cost per, uh, flight because the power of engine is very very minimum very 4% 3% 10% only to have emergency issues in case of something happen or runway is not clear aircraft engine is started so that we can give the throttle and it can be take off in it aircraft decreases its altitude so this you can see the aircraft is if it is h1 and this is the h2 so h1 is greater than h2 and it will be h2 will be zero so it is falling down next is descents are essentially component of an approach landing for large aircraft and the long range aircraft descent starts from 150 to 
220 kilometers for a bigger passenger aircraft before the approach. Aircraft speed decreases from cruise velocity to the approach speed. Some essential descents are to avoid the traffic. If any aircraft is in the same level of your height, you have to descend or you have to climb. So descent is very simple. So avoid the traffic, we have to descend. Poor flight condition, if that turbulence is there, some clouds are there, icing is there, weather is not good, that time also we have to descend. Clouds are also very dangerous for the flight because cloud is also carrying some electricity, static electricity, that electricity may be discharged on the aircraft and it will create the problems. To take advantage of wind direction, sometimes if the wind direction of certain height is good, from upper height to lower height, pilot will go and from there it will cruise the aircraft. To take advantage of the wind direction and also the warmer air, where you have the warm air, your it is favorable. So every pilot will want that I should fly in the warm air and also that tail direction. If the wind direction is towards the tail, it is good. So what is the tail direction is? If aircraft is flying like this in this direction and wind is also from behind, this is called the tail, tail wind. So if it is the tail wind, you will get more range because your ground speed will be high. This ground speed is the main component which gives the more range. And if it is against the wind, if aircraft is flying against the wind, your net ground velocity is reduced. So your range will be reduced. So everyone want to fly in the direction of the wind during the cruise. However, for the landing and the takeoff, we always fly against to the wind. That we have to take care because during the takeoff and the landing, we want the net relative velocity on the wing should be high so that it can lift up the load as much as possible. So here, <laughs> We have, we will be observing here the <coughs> equations of motion for the descending based on the Newton's uh, second law in an unaccelerated descending flight, equilibrium forces in x and the z direction. So this is the your x direction, as you can see, this is the x and the bottom side is the z direction. So this, your drag is in the x direction and the weight is in the z direction. So if we resolve the forces in the z direction and it is non-accelerated flight, so some of the forces will be zero. And if you see here L minus here, this is the W cos gamma. If This is the gamma. So this lift is equal to W cos gamma and so lift minus W cos gamma is equal to zero. And if you take in the x direction, x direction in the direction of the flight, here we have the drag, we have the thrust and the one component of W which is in the direction of the drag. So we will see that D minus T minus W sin theta. So one is here and another is here. So it is in the direction of the velocity. So D minus, this is the drag here. So here D minus T minus w sine gamma is equal to 0. So we can find out the gamma by help of this. So we know that from here if we see that lift and the weight. So cos gamma is equal to L is equal to w cos gamma. So cos gamma is equal to L by w. So gamma is equal to cos inverse lift by weight. So this is very very important. Now when new terms will be coming here. So this gamma is equal to cos inverse L by W. The rate of descent or OD is defined as V sin gamma. Vertical direction. So it is like this. It is V sin gamma and we know V is the speed of the aircraft. For a typical deaccelerated descent, we need to include the deacceleration A 
in the governing equation. So if you see here m a z in the z direction l minus w cos gamma is equal to m a z and in the x direction if you see t plus w sin gamma minus d is equal to m a x. So from this equation we can see that a x is equal to v2 square minus v1 square divided by 2x. Ax is the deceleration along the x-axis and Az is the deceleration along the z-axis. Now we will see the a problem over related to these equations. We will see the problem number one that the jet aircraft Cessna 560 with a maximum thrust of 13.55 kN and a mass of 700 kg is required to descend with a 5 degree of descent angle and maintaining a constant speed. If the desired velocity is 250 knot, what percentage of the engine thrust is required for this flight operation? So aircraft is descending and you want during descent is your velocity of the aircraft is 250 knot. So what percentage of the engine thrust is required for this flight operation? Assuming the air density is constant at 1.1 kg per meter cube, what must be the aircraft angle of attack? So we have to find out the angle of attack and we have to find out the thrust. How much percentage of thrust is required? And the third one is the determine the rate of descent. Area is given 31.83. CD naught the Parasite drag at zero, angle of attack is given 0 0.02, A is equal to 5.21 per radian and K is equal to 0 0.05. These values are given. So now we have to find out what we can do it. So the we have given the maximum maximum thrust 13 okay, how much 13.55 13.55 kilo newton or 13 point 13 550 newton so mass m is given 7000 kg Mass is 7000 kg. Descent angle that is the gamma is equal to 5 degree. Velocity v is equal to 250 knots. We can make 250 into 0.5144 meter per second. This is the velocity in meter per second. This is also given. So we have to find out the thrust. So and also area area of the wing S W is given somewhere 31.83 meter square C D naught is 0 0.02 A is given 5.21 per radian and K is equal to 0 0.05 these things are given so now we have to find out percentage of engine thrust that is our first part that we have to find out how much percentage of thrust is required. So we know the equation the lift is left minus w cos gamma is equal to 0. So lift is equal to w cos gamma. w is here m g cos gamma m is 7000 g is 9.81 into cos of 5 degree we will get this value as lift is equal to 6 8 4 6 8 4 0 9 newton so this we got the lift from the lift we have to find out the lift coefficient and we know very well that l is equal to half rho v square s w into c l. So c l is equal to 
CL is equal to 2 lift divided by rho V square SW 2 into 68409 divided by V square rho is equal to 1.1 into rho is 1.1 kg per meter cube is given. V velocity is 250 knots into 0 0.5144 square into SW is given 31.83. It is mentioned here area. So if you simplify this, we will get this CL is equal to 0 0.236. From this CL, we have to find out the CD and we know the relation to find the CD. So I will ch change the color. So to find CD and we know the relation that by the drag polar CD naught plus KCL square. So we know the CD naught is given here. This is CD naught is 0 0.02. K is given and we have just now find out the CL. So we will get that 0 0.02 plus K is 0 0.05, CL is 0 0.236 square. We will get this value as 0 0.0228. So this we, we got the value. From here CD, we can find out the drag. So this drag is equal to half rho v square sw into cd. So 0 0.5 into 1.1 into v square is 250 into 0 0.5144 whole square v square into sw is 31.83 meter square into cd 0 0.0228. So we got the drag is equal to drag is equal to 6601 newton so now this we got now cl cd l drag all these aerodynamics parameters we have got now we can put this value in the equation and we know that drag equation i will just change here so now we know that d minus t minus w sin gamma is equal to 0. So t is equal to d minus w sin gamma. D is we have got it 6, 6, 0, 1 here. Minus w is given 7000 into 9.81 into sin of 5. So we will get thrust is equal to 616 Newton. So how much percentage of the thrust? So thrust is given 13550. So but we need only this much. So the percentage of thrust. So this is the T of total T. So 616 divided by 13550 into 100, we will get 4.5 percentage. So uh, solution we got the first case that we need the thrust 4.4 percentage extra. So now we have to find out that how much is required. Or we will see that. Now we have to see the part B. So now part B we have to find out the angle of attack. Angle of attack of this aircraft to meet the given condition. And we know that A is given and we know that A is equal to Cl alpha and this is Cl by alpha. Cl is given. Alpha we have to find out. So alpha is equal to Cl by Cl alpha. Cl we have got 0 0.2236 and Cl alpha is 
given 5.2 radian. So we will get this as a 2.6 degree. So angle of attack, angle of attack alpha, we have got 2.6 degree. And this is another answer. Now we have to see the part C. In part C, we have to find out the rate of descent. Rate of descent. So how to get it? Or it is called ROD. We have just seen the equation for ROD is V sine gamma. V gamma is given. V is given. Very simple to find out. So V is 250 knots into 0 0.5144. It is in meter per second into sine gamma is 5 degree. So you will get it is 11.2 11.208 meter per second. We can convert this to 2208 feet per minute. It is called FPM. So this is the answer for the this case. So we have sorted out this uh, problem. Hope you have understood and we can also see that the in this case when the 4.5 percent of thrust is required only the rate of climb is 11.2 meter per second or 2208 feet per minute and angle of attack of this aircraft will be 2.60 very reasonable case is given here that we will uh, see here. Now we will see the, I think, next, uh, next problem. Problem number two. So just I will read out this problem. Problem number two now. The transport aircraft Boeing 777-200 with a mass of 20,000 kg. So mass is uh, given 20,000, 200,000 kg kg and two turbofan engine engines are two each generating a sea level thrust of 340 kilo newton is required to descend from 12,000 to 11,000 feet in this descent flight the air speed should be decreased from 195 to 185 meter per second when a 10 mile horizontal distance is covered Determine what percentage of the engine thrust should be employed at the beginning of this descent. Assume that the deacceleration in the Z axis is zero. Other characteristics of aircrafts area is 427.8 meter square. Span is 60.9. CD naught is 0 0.02 and E is equal to 0.87. So, if you see here, uh, mass of the aircraft is given and the engine thrust is also given. So, given what are the things given? Mass of the aircraft. Mass of the aircraft M is equal to 200,000 200, thousand kg then thrust of each engine that is the T it is given 342 kilo newton 342 into thousand newton so if there are two engine two into 342 thousand newton because we have the two engines, two turbofan engines in the problem. Next, descend from 12,000 to 11,000 feet. So, descent height. Initially, it was that in the 12,000. Now, this will go to 11,000 feet.
air speed 195 to 85 velocity 195 to 185 meter per second the vertical distance vh it is a distance so sh is given as 10 mile 10 miles and we know that 1 mile is equal to 1609 meter so this we have to multiply in this so we can get uh, 93 meter so 1 mile is equal to 1609 meter and 1 feet is equal to 0 0.3048 meter this we have to remember because here feet we have to convert these all things at 12,000 feet rho is 0 0.849 kg per meter cube so now we have to here area s is 427.8 meter square span b is 60.9 what is b is 60.9 meter e is equal to 0.87 these are the values which are given in the problem so total distance in the x axis now we have to start solution of the problem i will select the blue color so now we see that total distance total distance x in the flight path direction or x axis is we can see that this x direction is equal to h square plus d square here h is given one thousand feet square plus ten mile square we can convert this thing feet into meter per second three zero four point eight meter plus one six zero nine three it is in meter so you will get this value as a one six zero nine six point three meter so this is the horizontal distance which it is covering. So now we have to see the acceleration and here we, we say that it is a, a, the d acceleration d d acceleration along x direction that is the ax is equal to v2 square minus v1 square by 2x v2 is 185 final minus 195 square divided by 2 into 16096.3 so we will get this as a minus 0 0.118 meter per second square so this is the ax we got this is the d acceleration which we are getting now we have to find the uh, descent angle i will change to here so now descent angle that is the gamma and we know that gamma is equal to tan inverse this is h by d so 
tan inverse 304.8 divided by 16093 here you will get 0 0.019 radian this can be 1.085 degree so gamma and what is the gamma it is a flight path angle so if you see this what is this gamma it is flying like this and it is from horizontal this is the angle which is visible here this is the gamma so your so it is descending so from this horizontal is here so this angle is your minus because it is descending like this so this is the conclusion for this uh, uh, descend angle we have oh, oh, okay got it now we have to see the we have to calculate few more parameters before we start this uh, thing so we have to we have to calculate few parameters like aspect ratio and we know that it is b square by s b is 60.9 square divided by 427.8 8.67 k we know that 1 by pi e aspect ratio 1 upon 3.14 e is equal to 0 0.87 aspect ratio 8.67 you will get this as a 0 0.042 so we got the aspect ratio and we got the value of the k now we have to see in the vertical direction z direction where lift and weights are acting and then we have to find out the cl and the other parameters so we can see here that in z direction in z direction the equation of motion is l minus w of cos gamma is equal to m a z so a z is equal to 0 in vertical direction so we will have l is equal to w cos of gamma w is given 200000 into 9.81 cos of 1.085 we have got this value in the previous gamma value we have find out so we will get this lift is equal to 1960978 newton so this we got the lift we can also write this as a 1960.97 kilo newton now we have to find out the coefficient of lift so lift coefficient we know this lift is equal to half rho v square s into cl so this cl is equal to 2 lift divided by rho v s rho v square s 2 into l we have find out 1960978 divided by rho is 0.849 given velocity is 195 highest velocity during the starting and area is 427 4 427.8 so we will get this 0 0.284 so this is the value of cl now we have to find the value of cd now to find the coefficient of drag drag cd so we know that there is a relation between cd and the cl and this relation is like this cd is equal to cd naught plus kcl square cd naught is given 0 0.02 k we have just now find out 0 0.042 and cl is 0 0.284 square 
So we will get CD is equal to 0 0.0234. So if you know the CD, you can also find out drag, total drag. So just we will see in the, so now drag is equal to D half rho V square S CD. So 0 0.5 rho is 0 0.849, velocity is 195 square, S is equal to 427.8 and CD is equal to 0 0.0234. You will get this value as uh, 10, 16, 1664 Newton. So from here we can find out the thrust using the uh, thrust equation. So we will see the thrust. Thrust is equal to T is equal to D minus W sin gamma. D is 161664 minus W is equal to plus sorry plus here acceleration max is available so we can find out that this drag is equal to 161664 minus 200,000 into sine of into 9.81 9.81 into into sine 1.085 plus 200,000 into acceleration minus 0 0.118. So you will get this value as 1.100916 Newton or 100.9 kilo Newton. So this is the thrust. So now we have to see the, I will just write here. Now at 12,000 feet, it is in troposphere, TAV by T is equal to rho by rho naught. So we can find TAV is equal to T into T into rho by rho naught. So we know that it is 2 into 3, 4, 2, 000. It is given rho is 0 0.849 divided by 1.225. You will get this thrust available is equal to 4740 Two five Newton. So this is the thrust available, and if you see the percentage, you, if you want to see the percentage, so this will be one double zero nine one six, which we have find out divided by four seven four zero two five. Percentage will come zero point two one three or twenty one point three percentage. So in this condition. The pilot needs to apply 21.3 percentage of the engine thrust for this given case. So in the next lecture we will see that these are the topics I am going to cover. Effect of wind in aircraft performance, types of wind that is headwind and the tailwind, ground velocity range equation with ground velocity, effect of head and tail wind in the fuel consumption on propeller aircraft, effect of head and tail wing for the jet aircraft, gliding flight. These are my references. Anderson JD Jr. Aircraft Performance and Design International Edition, Magra Hills, first edition, 1999. SL by ME Aircraft Performance Theory and Practice, AIA Education Series. Any questions you can ask to my this email yd at the rate 
gmail.com please do like and subscribe my this channel do comment if you feel anywhere some mistake or you are not able to understand i have tried my level best to explain but sometimes i might have missed something please do pardon and let me know i will try to rectify if anywhere some mistakes are committed thank you very much for the joining we will see in the next lecture very soon till then goodbye and see you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates